Romans chapter number 8. We'll begin reading. Uh, just going to read a couple verses out of this chapter again. We can preach the whole chapter, read the whole chapter, get some help from the whole chapter. Uh, but I'm just going to look at three verses in this chapter. Verse 26 says, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now look at verse 31. What shall, we, uh, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And look at verse number 34. Who is he that condemneth? Boy, we're guilty of that, aren't we? We like to judge and condemn people. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of Holy Ghost juniors walking around. We condemn people why they don't come to church. We condemn people why they don't do this or why they don't do this or why they do that or why they don't do... Mm, I, I caution you, the Bible makes it very, quick, very clear. Who am I to judge another man's servant? Uh, if they know the Lord, the Lord knows how to straighten them out. But verse 34 says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Lord, I've been blessed being in the house of God this morning. Lord, I was blessed by watching those kids on that video. I was blessed by those young people's testimonies. Lord, I was blessed by the young people singing. I was blessed by Brother James' singing. Lord, I've been blessed by the good congregational singing. Lord, I can honestly say I've been blessed for being in the house of God this morning. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us from the Word of God. Lord, I realize that folks face a lot of things. I realize that, Lord, they have labored this hard this week. Lord, it's been hot this week. They faced adversity this week. Some of them look like they're climbing up a mountain, pushing a, a load of dirt, and they've run out of steam. But God, I'm also reminded that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I'm also reminded that, Lord, uh, you know our downsitting and our uprising. Nothing has ever caught you by surprise. And God, you do all things well. And Lord, in spite of what we faced, in spite of what we felt, in spite of all that uh, has went on this week, uh, we have found ourselves in the house of God this morning. Lord, I know many could echo like I have said, they have been blessed for being here. But Lord, I realize that everything that has transpired that has been so wonderful has really just set the table for the preaching of the Word of God. You chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. And God, you also said, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Lord, we can run on our feelings for a while, but God, it's faith that causes us to last the entire journey. So God, help us this morning, increase our faith, do a work in our midst, use this unworthy vessel, and help us leave out different than we came in. Save that one nearest hell, and we'll bless you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. In each of the three verses we read, there is a two-word phrase I'm interested in. In each verse, you find the words, for us. Now, can I say it's by no mistake there were three verses that said, for us. Can I say that? Verse 26 reveals that the Holy Spirit is for us. Look what it says. Likewise, the Spirit, capitalized, also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. He's for us, friends, uh, with groanings and utterings that cannot be uttered. Uh, I'm glad the Holy Ghost is for us today. He's the silent partner of the Godhead. Uh, and can I say, uh, everything he does is to point people to Christ. Uh, 
But can I say he's for you this morning? Uh, even when you get down to pray and you've run out of words and don't even know how to pray, uh, he can take what's in your heart uh, and take it to the Father. Uh, he is for us this morning. Uh, make no mistake, sometimes you think God's against you. Uh, I've got good news. God's for us uh, and the Holy Ghost is for us. Uh, can I say verse 31 uh, realizes uh, reveals that the Father is for us. Look what it says. Uh, uh, what shall we uh, then say to these things? If God be for us, uh, who can be against us? Uh, and I've got good news. The Father's for us. Uh, so let every imp of hell camp outside our door. Uh, uh, let uh, Satan uh, uh, spit and holler and huff and puff. Uh, it don't matter, friend, because uh, uh, God is for us. Uh, and who can be against us today? Uh, and then verse 34 lets us know that Jesus uh, is for us. Uh, uh, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, uh, yea, uh, rather that is risen again, uh, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Uh, hey, Jesus is for us. Uh, hey, the darling Son of God's for me this morning. Uh, and I say hallelujah. Uh, we're on the winning side because uh, God is for us. Uh, we can take refuge in the fact that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost is for us. Uh, I want to preach on this thought this morning. Who is God for? Now, make no mistake, God loves everybody. But God's not for everybody. And uh, please hold on to what I'm about to say. There are some people that are saved, but God's not for them. Hey, when that prodigal was in the hog pen, the father loved him, but the father wasn't for what he was doing. Hmm? There's some people God loves and God is saved, but God's not for. Hmm? Hey, it's a privilege to have him for you. And there's a great responsibility that comes in being a child of God and having him for you. You can live however you want to, but you won't have the blessings of God on it. There's a lot of folks uh, that are under the umbrella of grace, uh, but they do not have the windows of heaven open and flowing their way. They always struggle, always have problems, always uh, uh, are up and down and in and out. It could be God's not for them. I want God for me, don't you, Brother Brian? Hmm? Uh, uh, listen, I, I want my wife for me. I want my children for me. I want our church for me, but I certainly want God for me. So who is God for? Can I say, first of all, this morning, God is for the saved. Hmm? Uh, look, look, look again at verse number 14. We didn't read it, but go back to verse 14. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye not, uh, ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, uh, 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 but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Uh, can I say he's for the saved? Uh, he's for the born again. Uh, he's for the blood washed. Uh, uh, can I say this morning, uh, uh, God's, it's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, and God said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, God is for every sinner getting saved. Uh, hey, he loves sinners. Uh, he died for sinners. Uh, hey, he saved, uh, sent forth the church to send out the gospel uh, uh, so sinners can hear. Uh, there's good news. They don't have to stay lost. Uh, they can get saved. Uh, and God, when he saves them, uh, he adopts them into the family of God. Uh, he seals them with the Holy Spirit of promise, uh, robes them in his righteousness. Uh, hey, what a blessing that uh, uh, the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit uh, we are the children of God hallelujah huh? people doubt their salvation oh, well if the spirit of God lives in you he'll let you know here's a good reason to know you're saved try and do something that a saved person wouldn't do and see if the Holy Ghost doesn't speak to you and tell you not to do it 
or catch yourself doing something you ought to not do and see if the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you. You need to get right to God. Now, if you can do it and it don't bother you, or you can do it and there are no uh, 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 gates uh, uh, saying, uh, don't go through this gate, uh, you're not saved, friend. Hmm? The Spirit of God won't let you go back to the hog pen without a fight. There's an inner turmoil goes on. His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Sitting in a service like this this morning, and them kids got to singing, and if you're just sitting there thinking, well, they're cute, but nothing touched you, you might do some checking up. Yeah. Uh, now, you didn't have to act like me and Brother Phil, but there, it was, there was something inside saying, wow, that was, hallelujah. Hmm? If there was nothing going on inside, uh, there was no spirit bearing witness with your spirit because the spirit was bearing witness on them. You might want to do some checking up. Hmm? Uh, uh, say, preacher, I don't feel good today. What's that got to do with worshiping God? Uh, he's worthy of our praise. We're to worship him every breath we've got ought to, ought to worship the Lord. We're to rejoice in the Lord always, he said. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, uh, it's not based on how I feel. It's based on the fact he's God. Uh, and I'm not worthy of anything of him. Uh, and because he's God and he's my God and he saved me from my sin, uh, uh, regardless of how I feel, uh, I can throw up holy hands and say glory. Uh, because I ought to be in hell today. Can I let you in on a little secret? I don't feel good today. I thought I felt good. But uh, there's something going on on the inside of me. I, I, when they got up to sing, I went back there and told Miss Ness, I said, you got some medicine. She gave me some. I was, I was doping up back there in the pew. <laughs> I knew I had, to, I had to preach, and I'm thinking, Lord have mercy, you got to touch me and help me. Mm, but because I don't feel good, that didn't make me suck on my thumb and say, I ain't going to serve God today. Uh Lord have mercy. He was beaten beyond recognition. He still carried the cross up Calvary's hill for me. Uh, can I say he's for the saved? But can I say this? He's for the spiritual. Look at verse 24. Got real quiet right there. I wonder why. I'm sorry. I said verse 24. I didn't have my glasses on. Look at verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life is of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. In other words, we couldn't keep the law. If we could have kept the law, Christ wouldn't have had to die. Hmm? But he goes on to say this, it was weak in the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. He kept the law. Hmm? But look what else it says. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. And when you're saved and you walk after the will of the flesh and your mind's after the things of the world, you're dead spiritually. That's what he's saying. Hmm? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's why some of you come in ready to worship and some of you didn't. Some of you have been carnal and some of you have been spiritual. The carnal ones are dead, but the spiritual ones have life and peace. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, we're hitting a nerve. Look at verse 7. I'm just reading the Word of God. That's all I'm doing. Look at verse 7. But the carnal mind is enmity against God. That means you're, you're actually an enemy, at God, uh, enemy of God. You're against God. Well, I don't want to be against Him. I, I, and He won't be for you unless you're for Him. Hmm? Mm, but it is not subject to to the law of God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be look at verse number 8 so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God when you read the TV guide do they even still have them 
When you read the TV guide or the newspaper more than you read your Bible, you're carnal, carnal, not spiritual. Hmm? Uh, uh, when, when the world gets more of your attention than, than, than God does, you're carnal. When you're on Facebook more than you got your face in the book, you're carnal. Hmm? Uh, uh, boy, it's getting real quiet right now. Hmm? Uh, listen, spiritual folks are open-hearted to the Word of God. That means when the preacher's preaching the Word of God and uh, you got your heart open to hear what God says. You see, every time I mention Facebook, there's some of you shut me out. I sense it every time I say it. That's why I say it often. Sooner or later... Uh, uh, one of us is going to break down and I got, I got news for you I'm a lot more hard headed than you are hmm? I've just seen how many lives have been ruined by that junk uh, but spiritual folks they're open hearted when God touches their sin they get right and then they thank God that God showed them hmm? their hearts open to what thus saith the Lord can I say this? Uh, spiritual folks are obedient to the Word of God. When God touches something in their life, they say, okay, Lord, thank you, and they do, they do it. He's saying about Abraham. Do you know what a remarkable thing that Abraham, who was a rich man, left all of his family and went out, and God didn't even tell him where he's going? Some of you all won't even plan a vacation unless you know every bathroom stop, every restroom stop, I mean, restaurant stop, uh, 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 what you're going to eat at every restaurant, what's the best value for this and the best value. That's not vacation, that's work. Uh, vacation's putting on flip flops and saying, who cares? I'm chilling. But you see, some of you are so wound up and bound up and everything, you're not spiritual. Because you're not leaving yourself open for God to show you anything Amen. or do anything. Some of you already make your mind up before you come to church if you're going to go to the altar or not, or if you're going to sing in the choir or not, or if you're going to do this or do that. You know what you are? You're closed-minded. Hmm? Matter of fact, we bust some people's bubbles this morning. We didn't even have Sunday school. We showed a video to them kids and let them testify. Huh? Oh, that was a little different, a little unusual. Some of you have been, you've lost all your spirituality because that blew your mind, huh? Well, you don't want to come to camp meeting. Your mind will get really blown. Don't tell them what to go on. But see, spiritual folks are obedient to the Word of God. God speaks, they just mind God. Isn't that our one rule around here? Mind the Lord. And God touches your heart, just mind Him. That's what spiritual folks do. Mm -mm. But can I say this? Spiritual folks have offered themselves before the Lord. I told you, Brother James was spot on on that song. Some of you haven't offered you, 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 yourself. You're, you're willing to offer your Isaac sometimes, but you want to offer yourself. But you know what the Word of God says? Romans chapter 12 says this, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, can I say spiritual people, they offer themselves continually before God. The great apostle Paul said he died daily. If he had to die out to sin every day, how much do we have to die out? Mm -mm. What I'm trying to tell you, there's a lot of people that are saved, going to heaven, they come to church, they pay their tithes, they, they do all kinds of things, but they're not spiritual. God's for the spiritual. God's not for the saved person who pays their tithes, who goes through rituals, but they're carnally minded. He's not for that. Mm -mm. Uh, matter of fact, he told that church in Revelation chapter 3, the church of Laodicea, uh, because you're, not, you're neither hot or cold, you're lukewarm, I spew thee out of my mouth. Can I say what God does when he looks at most Baptist churches? He gets sick. Because they're not hot or cold. They're just going through the motions. They're lukewarm. God's for the spiritual. He's for the saved. Can I say this? God is for sufferers. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 
Look up in verse 17 of chapter 8 here in Romans. He says, And if children, then heirs, and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Uh, listen, uh, do you think that that thorn you have, that problem you have, uh, uh, that condition you have, uh, uh, do you think that caught God by surprise? Uh, uh, some of you are praying for God to remove the very thing he put in your life uh, uh, that will cause you uh, uh, to suffer for his name's sake that others can see your you're still going to love God and serve God regardless of your circumstances or conditions. But can I say, it didn't catch God by surprise. God allowed it in your life because he has a purpose for it. And God is for sufferers. The best thing you can do is do the Apostle Paul, uh, embrace what God's put in your life, uh, whether you're abounding or whether you're base, uh, whether it's sunshine or whether it's dark clouds, uh, uh, you're going to live for God, uh, you're going to serve God, uh, you're going to worship God, uh, you're going to praise God, uh, uh, because friend, uh, uh, this life just happens for a moment, uh, and the sufferings of this present time uh, are not worthy to be compared to what he's got over yonder uh, when we're glorified with him. Uh, there's coming a day uh, you'll be glad you carried your cross for him uh, hey I say uh, he's for them that suffer uh, matter of fact it's a pretty good testimony on your life if you don't suffer um, that you're not living godly they that live godly shall suffer persecution I'd like to tell you I'd like to be a TV evangelist and tell you everything's going to be wonderful you know, give me a thousand bucks, God's going to give you ten thousand and give you, you know, teeth of gold and everything else. Um, but the truth of the matter is, the Christian life is a life of heartache and suffering and pain and problems. But the good news is, we never go through it alone. We've got a Savior who helps us and who touches us. And who is for us? I'm telling you, he's for the sufferers. He's for the spiritual. He's for the saved. Can I say this? He's for the simple. Jesus didn't come and was born in a palace. He's born in a manger. He didn't first reveal himself to kings and nobles. He revealed himself to shepherds. Hmm? He's for the simple. Hmm? Matter of fact, he said over there in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 28, And the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, hath God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. God chose the base things to confound the wise. And God's for the simple things. Uh, God's not in complicating things. Uh, he's in the simple things. Uh, hey, uh, 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 if God has blessed you uh, uh, to have a few things, that's a blessing. Uh, uh, but hey, I want to tell you, uh, most preachers that are highly educated don't have a touch of God. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, uh, most preachers uh, 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 that have big churches don't have a touch of God. Uh, uh, most uh, uh, preachers uh, uh, and churches uh, 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 that have all kinds of buildings and lands and programs uh, uh, have a lot, uh, uh, but they don't have a lot of God. Uh, uh, but I've seen some little country churches. Uh, I've seen some some country preachers uh, and I've seen folks that didn't have two nickels to rub together uh, uh, but they had a whole lot of God uh, I'd rather have a whole lot of God uh, than all this world has to offer uh, hey uh, God's for the simple uh, don't let the world or somebody intimidate you because you aren't uh, meeting their standards I'd rather meet God's standard and I've found the way to God is getting low the lower you are, the bigger God is in your life. Because God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God's for the simple, huh? Hallelujah. Uh, I think that's why he's so good to us. He just shows up around here, because we just, we just common folks. huh? Uh, listen. Uh, we're not out to impress anybody but Jesus. Hmm? 
He's for the simple. Can I say this? God is for the steadfast. I'm, at, I'm, I'm preaching on who's God for. This is a little simple thought. Who's he for? He's for the steadfast. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. You know what a blessing is? I've been saved 48 years been preaching 35 years you know what a blessing is what I believed 48 years ago and what I started preaching 35 years ago I still believe still preaching I just preach longer uh, brother Charlie Miller's in heaven he said brother Doug I remember when you used to preach about 20-25 minutes what happened I said I learned more uh, but can I say that's what God wants us to be unmovable steadfast not uh, blowing around with every wind of doctrine every new program 40 days of purpose the frog movement what will Jesus do movement all these movements you know what they do they come and go you know what lasts forever the word of God Amen. and to be honest with you every one of those movements are based on humanism not the scriptures hmm? uh, I find this program works all the time it's in season, out of season, it works. Uh, spring, summer, winter, fall, this works, huh? Uh, thank God for the Word of God. But we're to be steadfast. You know one of the great testimonies of our church from preachers that haven't been in prayer for a while to come and you're still here? You know, we got folks been here uh, uh, over 20 years. Clint's been here 50 years. But I mean, since I've been here, there's, there's some of you been here 20 years. Some of you been here 15 years. Some of you have been here 10 years. And, you know, what's amazing is folks come in, they get anchored into God, and they just don't leave. Because hmm? we're to be steadfast. Hmm? God had not changed. Why should we change? Uh, I'm tired of going into churches and you can't read your Bible because it's too dark. Uh, Jesus is the light, and there ought to be light in the house of God. Duh. I'm tired of going in and, and, and listening to folks sing. You can't understand what they're singing because it's so loud, the music's so loud. Hmm? Let me help you with something. You know, and I, I try to be a musician, but it's not about the music, it's about the words of the songs. The message in the songs what blesses people, not the talent of the musicians behind it. Huh? God wants things that are steadfast, unmovable. He's for steadfastness, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's what God's for. If our church's reputation was based on your accountability and your attendance and your actions, what would our church be? Because that's what it is. Hmm? He wants us to be steadfast. Ooh, it's real quiet. I'm going to hit this. <laughs> Let me go over here to my friend, Miss Jackie. Jackie Ray, a ray of sunshine. That's why she sits near Sunny Ray. Hmm? Her name's really Sonia, but she don't like people to know that. Jackie Ray. Now, your darling husband's up there running the video. Wait, Brian. He looks pretty good for a trash man. Uh, now, if he come home Thursday night, he says, Miss Jackie, I love you. And I've been pretty faithful this week. Is that going to settle well with you? Uh, I, know, I know all them deer heads you got in your house. His head would be next to one of them, wouldn't it? <laughs> Brother Herschel, you've owned businesses for a long time. Do you tolerate employees that are pretty faithful? They show up three out of five days? No, no you don't tolerate pr pretty faithful. Uh, no, no. You wouldn't been in business a long time if you had just pretty faithful employees. Uh, well, how come it is we understand being faithful to our mate, and we should? We understand being faithful to our jobs, and you should? When you're working, you ought to give that man all you got because he's paying you. Hmm? How come we don't treat the Lord that way? How come we don't treat the Lord's house that way? Hmm? 
There's a whole lot of verses in there about the storehouse referring to the church and how it's to be taken care of. A whole lot of verses about how to take care of the temple and the men of God and the house of God. How come we are satisfied with being pretty faithful to the things of God? But worldly things, we're very faithful. Hmm? It shows we're carnally minded and not spiritually minded. God's for the steadfast. Hmm? Those that seek Him first in His kingdom and His righteousness. Those that put their heart in the church and the things of God. You say, but preacher, I, I get paid to work my job. I don't get paid to come to church. Who do you think gave you your job? Who do you think gives you the health to work your job? Who do you think keeps your job in business in this world's messed up economy so you can work a job? Hmm? Uh, let me help you. His name is Jehovah God, the Lord. Hmm? Hmm. God's for the steadfast. You know what I found? When you put him first, he blesses you so much beyond your, th your thinking. It's been a while since I've shared some stories. Let me share some stories. I don't, we weren't married. We was dating. And I bought that Isuzu pickup truck. whip de doo for my Isuzu. Huh? Shut up. Do you know Isuzu is the oldest Japanese car manufacturer? You didn't know that, did you? And you just laughed at it. Been around a lot longer than that goofy Toyota you're driving out there. Yeah, huh? I'll say one thing about Isuzu pickup trucks. They were supposed to be made out of metal. They were made out of something that rusted very easily. Every Isuzu pickup truck rusted around the wheels and the bed. They, they, just, they rusted away. I mean, in junkyards everywhere, there's motors running with no, no body, and they're Isuzu motors. Uh, that's why you don't see Isuzus running around anymore, because they all rusted to death, huh? But can I say about that Isuzu pickup truck that I had? Not one spot of rust on it. Hmm? Can I say something about that Isuzu pickup truck I had? God blessed it. Now, I was young and stupid, didn't have a whole lot of money. Miss Nett married me anyway. And we didn't have a whole lot. Matter of fact, the first year we were married, all we ate was chicken because that's all we could afford. And when you invite me to go out for fried chicken, I'll probably entertain you, but I'm not going to like it because I ate enough chicken that first year we was married. That, uh, hallelujah. Thank God when we got to get some beef. You know what I'm saying? But listen, I had that Isuzu pickup truck, put 165,000 miles on it, and did not change the oil in it five times. Now, you're supposed to change oil every 3,000 miles. Factured up. I didn't change oil in that thing like I was supposed to. Can I say something else about that Isuzu pickup truck? The day that that life ended on that Isuzu pickup truck, I had 90,000 miles on the tires and they still look new. Hmm? Can I say that truck ran for me? That truck didn't rust for me? That truck didn't have any problems with it? It still had the original brakes, the original clutch, the original shocks, the original everything on except tires. I mean, uh, uh, God blessed that Isuzu pickup truck. You say, why? Because I just believed God and was faithful to God, faithful to God's house. Instead of putting money in oil changes, I put money in the, in the offering plate. We, we tithe, we gave money to missions. Uh, we just put God first, and God just blessed that Isuzu pickup truck. So what happened to that Isuzu pickup truck? I was driving in downtown Cincinnati, and some hillbilly went the wrong way on a one-way street trying to get somebody out of jail down there and uh, uh, hit me where the, uh, the front fender and the door met and put a big dent in, and it totaled that poor little Isuzu pickup truck. Hmm? God was finished with it and gave me something else. You say, what are you trying to say? I'm saying, when you put God first and you're steadfast and you're faithful, God touches things in your life that you never even consider. When Miss Annette and I got married, the pastor of this church and his wife knew a family whose mother and father died in a car accident at the same time. And they was trying to get rid of a lot of mom and dad stuff. And they, they let us know that they had a washing machine. We could get the washer and dryer, both of them, for 50 bucks. 
I told her, man, it costs us more than that going to the laundromat for about three months. I said, if it lasts six months, we're in, we're in the black. Uh, 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 and so uh, we bought that washing machine, that dryer, for, for six months. This is truth. Uh, uh, we had that washing machine and dryer, I don't know, 11, 12, 15 years. I don't know. I got tired of looking at them. I went and bought her a new one because I got tired of looking at them. We say, why? Was it such a good wash? No, it wasn't such a good way. It's just God touched it and blessed it because we put God first. I'm trying to tell you, uh, when you put God first, uh, He knows how to take care of you. Uh, those Jews were in the wilderness for 40 years, uh, their shoes didn't wear out, their clothes didn't wear out. Uh, God fed them manna from heaven every day, uh, blew quail in. Uh, God opened up rocks and gave them water. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, God can do the impossible when you put him first because uh, he's for the steadfast. Uh, he's for the spiritual. Uh, David said he'd never seen the righteous begging uh, nor see begging bread. Uh, the reason some of you always have money problems, uh, always having problems, uh, uh, keeping things sustained. Uh, you're not living righteously. Uh, uh, you're not putting him first uh, and he's not for you today. Uh, he loves you, but he's not for you. Uh, get steadfast uh, and see how big and how great his hand is. Uh, uh, I'd be embarrassed to tell you how many suits and sport coats I got. I'd be embarrassed, and that's embarrassed, how many shoes I got. I bought three pair while I was down there this week. She said, another pair? She, we had to remodel the closet back uh, earlier in the year, just fit my shoes in there, huh? He said, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the blessings of God is what I'm talking about. Uh, he's been good to me. Uh, up until I got fat recently, I was wearing suits that I'd had 15 years. God bless them. Touch. I got a pair of shoes right now. They're 20 years old. I wear them tonight. You'd think, man, those are brand new shoes. Say, how come? Because God's been good. Uh, I'm just telling you, he's good. Yeah. To the steadfast fast, because he's for them. Mm, are you steadfast? Well, since you're about to die, let me give you one more. God's for the sorrowed. Look in chapter 9. Verse number one, the Apostle Paul is giving us his heart right here. He said, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also beareth the, bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Verse number three. Paul says, if it was possible, he said, I'd die and go to hell that Israel might be saved. That's a burden, friend. You wonder why we don't see folks saved? You show me somebody that's got that burden, I'll show you a bunch of folks getting saved. See, we got a burden to make sure we, we got all this other stuff going on, but not souls. But he said he was in sorrow of heart continually. God's for the sorrowed. He's for those that sorrow over souls. When's the last time you lost a night's sleep for somebody's lost? When's the last time you spent a night praying for folks to get saved you didn't even know? God's for the sorrowed for souls. He's for those that sorrow for their sin in their life. Listen, I'm not talking about wicked, vile, ungodly sin that you know some, some heathen does. But can I help you something? Even a little white lie is sin in the eyes of God. Right. We categorize sin, God doesn't. But when was the last time you were so sick with your own humanity you was asking God to strip you and replace it with His holiness? When was the last time your own complacency bothered you so much you asked God to forgive you? You lost a night's sleep sorrowful for the sin in your life and I say he sorrows for the, for the sick he does he's the great physician sometimes he doesn't heal everybody but he's for those that sorrow for the sick got a burden for the sick he's for those that sorrow for the soiled the prodigals those folks that used to come to church now they're out in the world in the hog pens you got a burden for them God's for that person that sorrows for those folks and God's 
for those that sorrow for a soaking, for a revival, that spend their time praying for a move of God. God's for them. My estimation, we've tried our best to let you know God's for the saved. It's for the spiritual. It's for those that suffer. It's for the simple. It's for the steadfast. And it's for the sorrowed. My question to you this morning, is God for you? He loves you. But is he for you? Is his hand on you? His spirit is in you if you're saved. But is his hand on you? Do you have the touch of God in your life? Is he for you? Is your life evidenced by the fact that God is for you? Can people look and say, I don't know much about a lot of things, but I know that person's a person of God. You can see God in their life. Can that be said of you? Is God for you this morning? He wants to be. Is he for you? I wonder this morning, are you willing to ask him, God, are you for me? Has he revealed something to you in the preaching already that he's not pleased with in your life you need to get taken care of? Has he created something in your heart that desires more of God and less of the world? My dear friend, the only thing that's going to matter 100 years from now is what we did for God and whether or not God was for us or against us. You know why a lot of churches don't have revival? He's stamped Ichabod on the door. He's not for them because they're not for him. I wonder this morning, are you willing to get to where you're for him so he can be for you? Because nothing else matters. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for the word of God. Thank you for Romans chapter 8. Thank you for the reassurance we get from that chapter, the help and the hope. But God, thank you for the charge. God, I want you for me. And I realize that comes with great responsibility. I have to be for you. So God, help me, help me to seek you, to long for you, to put you first. God, you would be for me. God, help me to meet the qualifications that you set forth of who you're for. God, I pray for folks here this morning. I know our consciences are seared and we have a great ability of painting pictures for ourselves that we're a lot better than we are. So I pray the Holy Ghost would deal with hearts. I certainly pray for somebody who's trying to convince themselves they're saved and they're not. I pray today you'd reveal unto them their lost condition. Help them to come, get born again. I pray for folks that are saved. Lord, they may be faithful to come to church. But Lord, there's just something in between them and you. I pray you'd break through. I pray you'd send revival. And I pray for folks, they'd go all in for Christ. God help us. And we'll bless you for it. Speak to hearts now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.